Hey everybody, how's everybody doing today? My name is Jose, and thank you for joining me on 365 Movies in 365 Days, your daily movie podcast. Well, a lot has happened today. Today has been an exciting day. If you did not know, today was the first day of Comic-Con down in San Diego, and that meant that there is a lot that happened. Now, normally I record this show usually around 11 p or 11 p.m., 11 a.m., I should say, Central Time. Just because that's the time that if something big is going to happen, it would have happened by then. So it gives me time all afternoon to record and edit the show out. Well, that didn't happen today. Instead, I had to keep waiting and waiting and waiting because it seemed like at every moment that I was turning to, there was something new happening, a new trailer or new news for this movie or that movie. So... I'm a little bit behind. I actually recorded the show once earlier today and completely scrapped it. And I was like, nope, I'm just going to wait a couple hours and just redo it. <laughs> so I am redoing it. And in the meantime, what I ended up doing, because I had some time to kill while I was, you know, going away on social media, I actually watched a movie. Um, I watched First Man uh, with Ryan Gosling that came out late last year because the moon landing is coming up very soon. So I've been in a moon you know, space type mindset lately. So let's just get to it. There is a couple things. Now, all of these have to do, everything in the news really has to do today with some movie previews that came out. Mostly today, one that yet came out yesterday. And then I have some news on Criterion uh, releases that was announced today. So let's get started with the first movie preview. And that would be for It Chapter 2. So we pick up the story 27 years later. I believe the story actually takes place in 2016 and so it doesn't quite match up with 2019 just because it's not an you know full even years if let's say Pennywise came out every 30 years well then it would be 2019 but he doesn't he comes out every 27 years so I believe that drops it off about 20 16, 17. So not quite present, but pretty close. Like I said, it takes up 27 years later and there's a lot of miles between the bodies and souls of all these kids in the loser club. I have high hopes for this movie, but even if it's half as better than the original part two, then this is a winner. And so far, it looks like it's going to be amazing, scary, frightening, thrilling, whatever, you know, word you want to describe scary, it's going to be there. So I'm really looking forward to this. And this is the final preview and it doesn't really show us a whole lot or give us much of an idea of how they're going to steer this. Is it going to stay um, faithful to the book? Is it going to be kind of like the original part two of the original miniseries, which I hope it's not? We don't know yet, but we will be finding out pretty soon, September 6th. And that's just right around the corner. The other movie that dropped. And the reason why I had to re-record this show is because Top Gun Maverick dropped. They dropped their preview at Comic-Con today. In fact, it was uh, Conan O'Brien introduced Tom Cruise himself who came out and let the world in on, you know, our first look. Because all we really had at this point was, you know, just rumors as to what the movie was going to be like, what it was going to look like, and all, all that exciting stuff. But today we got the new trailer. Now, the overall plot is still still heavy, you know, under wraps. We don't really know. All we know is that it takes place 34 years after the original. And this time, you know, Tom Cruise is a flight instructor at the Top Gun school where he has Goose. Remember Goose, his co-pilot buddy? His son is now a pilot there. And so he has to kind of mentor him. I don't know if it, there's a, where the Goose's son is now like the, you know, to, the, Tom Cruise character back in the original or if you know what the dynamics are there um, but at least it looks exciting there was a lot of great action in it which is what I expect from a movie like this is tons and tons of action so that's great to see um, it is scheduled to release on June 26th of 2020 so we still do have about a little less than a year to go um, which always makes me wonder if they have these previews ready to go what else are they waiting for you know how much more stuff do they have to do something tells me that there's a lot of rewrites and reshoot or they're just perfecting it i hope it's just that they're perfecting it to make it the best you know but i guess we'll see the other preview or one of the other previews that dropped today i have look it is for cats and i'm not going to waste your time and tell you that this looks amazing because it doesn't look horrible it looks so horrible that somebody needs to write the letters 
to remember when Sonic, when the preview for Sonic the Hedgehog came out a couple months ago and people freaked out because it looked horrible? Those people need to write a letter and apologize because this thing looks like trash. It looks awful. I don't care what you have to say about it. It looks horrible. I don't want to see this. And I don't know how many people want to see it either. It just looks awful awful singing cats i'm sorry i'm i i love cats i own a cat i'm a cat lover you know and i'm i'm not on board with you i like musicals i'm not on board with you it no no i'm not it just i shake my head when i saw it and it just looks horrible i had to stop the preview halfway through because i just i couldn't go there nope 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 so the other preview that we have that I want to talk to you about wasn't one that was dropped today. It was actually dropped yesterday. And the reason why I want to talk about it, because even though it wasn't announced at Comic-Con and really has nothing to do as a big, you know, tent movie of any kind, it comes out um, on August 30th, is a movie called Don't Let Go. And the reason I want to talk to you about it, because I'm really excited about it. Okay. So here's the premise. The premise is there's a guy who, and sorry that I don't know the actors. Um, I'm just pulling this off the top of my head. I should have been more prepared and written down the actors' names. No, I take that back. I know one actor, Storm Reed, who is the young girl. Well, I'll get to that in a second, what she does. But she was in A Wrinkle in Time. And even though A Wrinkle in Time was a piece of crap, she really stood out. And I really have high hopes for her in her future. Let me go back to the story. So there is a detective. And it's a cop. And he has a niece. And they're very close. And then one day, the niece and her family are murdered. And then two weeks later, he gets calls from the niece who's in the past. And now they have to figure out and work together to find the killer. Does this sound? kind of familiar a little bit it's kind of sounds like frequency right from a few years ago well not a few years ago from many years ago with uh i believe it was dennis quaid who was in that one it kind of sounds like it here's the thing with frequency frequency was it was just a little bit too much on the melodrama for my like this one seems like it's going to be a little bit more on the thriller even maybe even stepping into the horror genre but not too much what's amazing and why i'm really excited about it is that it's another example of the great movies that blumhouse productions is putting out they have been on a roll lately with some absolutely amazing movies like they are responsible for upgrade which i love happy death day which i love they have been you know, responsible for a lot of original thinking in Hollywood these days in a time and in a place where everybody's crying about sequels and prequels and reboots and all this other shit. Blumhouse has been putting out some fantastic mid material to the point where if I see Blumhouse, I'm all in. I don't care what it is. I'm all in because I know it's going to be something different. So I really want to let everybody know that that is coming because when new and interesting material comes out, we have to support it. We have to let Hollywood know that this is what we want. Yes, we want the big blockbusters. We want the sequels. We want the, you know, superheroes. But we also want original programming. And so I'm always big about telling people you can't complain that there isn't anything out there that's original. When there is, you have to go and find it. So that's Don't Let Go. The other thing in the news that kind of was released today and this doesn't apply to most people most people aren't going to really care about this next section and this is criterion criterion if you don't know is a company that releases deluxe packages of movies they will take a movie they'll you know remaster it and upgrade it and then they release it with tons of extras uh commentaries you know posters all kinds of interesting stuff that takes you beyond just the movie and they tend to release art house films um independent films foreign films films that are kind of forgotten even some big time um hollywood pictures have been released on this so criterion announced their releases for october and i just kind of want to highlight the four that are being released because the four that are being released, I think, are really important films that anyone should see. So the first one that's going to get released, and I'm going to read off the official Criterion release form. So I didn't write this, just so you let you know, just up front. But I do like how they summed up the four uh, pictures. So the first one is called When We Were Kings. In 1974, Leon Gass traveled to Africa to film In Zaire, a music festival planned to accompany an unprecedented The Rumble in the Jungle, in which a late career underdog Muhammad Ali would contend with the younger powerhouse George Foreman for the Boxing Heavyweight Championship title, a fight between two blacks in a black nation organized by blacks. That is how it was put on a billboard. 
When the main event was delayed, extending Ali's stay in Africa, Gas wound up assuming a treasure trove of footage, which he then took for the next two decades to assemble to produce When We Were Kings. It is amazing. I saw this in 1996 when it originally came out and a much needed updated cleaned up version was really needed for this one. If you like sports documentaries, if you like movies about culture, about identity, When We Were Kings is an absolute must. And so when it does come out, I really, you know, suggest that if this is up your alley to go out and get it because it is really, really good. The next movie that we have is not a new movie, so it's not joining the collection as a new movie. It is getting an upgrade. So it's already been on the Criterion DVD, and I actually watched the DVD within the last week. So I'm actually excited that the Blu-ray is coming out. And the reason why is because while the DVD was great, you know, things look a thousand times better on Blu-ray, even if it is a silent film, black and white from 1922. And that movie is Haxon. Haxon is about grave robbery, torture, possessed nuns, satanic Sabbath. It's directed by Benjamin Christian, who directed this as a dramatic vignette. So they're little pieces. They're not, it's not a whole narrative. And it's really unique because it almost acts like a documentary mixing in with uh, dramatic scenes. And it traces and it traces the evolution of this idea. Okay. The idea is that it explores that scientific idea that witches of the Middle Ages suffered the same hysteria as turn of the century psychotic patients. Okay. So it's basically saying the way we treat um, people with mental illnesses is the same way we tra- we treated witches. It is, yes, this is 1922, but I think that you can almost apply that we haven't changed a whole lot since then. It is a gripping movie. You will never see anything like it. Now, if black and whites aren't your thing, okay, and that's a lot of people, don't worry. There is a great version on there, and I hopefully on the uh, Blu-ray they bring it up. There's an updated version that was released in the 60s with some jazz score and a narration that was added onto it, and right off the top of my head, the um, poet who did the narration escapes my mind, but it is a little bit more friendlier version to get into, but Again, if you're a horror fan, you owe it to yourself to see Haxon. If you're a lover of, you know, historical important films, this is right up your alley and it is masterful. It is great. Okay. The third one that is being released is not necessarily one film. It's a collection. And it's a collection of three silent films from the great Joseph von Steinberg, okay? Steinberg was a Vienna-born, New York-raised director. He directed some of the most influential and stylish dramas to ever come out of Hollywood. So best known for his star-making uh, relationship with uh, Marlene Dietrich. He was great. And this collection takes three of his better... I wouldn't say known because uh, most of you people who are listening to this are probably saying, who the hell is this guy? So it's not better known, but better artistic movies. So the first one is called Underworld, and it is a gritty look at gangster life. And in fact, I would, and it's just not my opinion, the opinions of many people, that it is the first real gangster type film ever okay the next one is called russian uh it's called the last command and it's about the i was going to say it that it was called russian uh revolution but it's called the last command and it is about the russian revolution so that one's great the third one i've actually seen it's called the docks of new york um and it is about a kind of love triangle kind of about a man who's a sailor who works on a dock and he kind of gets like a weekend off gets himself into all kinds of trouble and it is about the lie styles and the struggle of people who live at the bottom you know so all three are coming those are being packaged as one little package and that's great now the fourth one is maybe the most important especially here in the u.s and probably all over the world i I could imagine but it kind of touches on a lot of american themes this is called mate one okay and it is written and directed by john styles And it is about the wrenching historical drama recounts the true story of the West Virginia coal town where local miners struggled to form a union. And then it rose to a pitch in 1920 when an all-out war between the laborers and the management came to a head. It has the acting debut of Chris Cooper. It has James Earl Jones. It has Mary McDonald. It has William 
on him, it has a lot of great people and it is a really, really gripping, dramatic movie that unfortunately so many people don't know about. And that's the great thing about the uh, Criterion Collection that it does focus on those movies that tend to get left out sometimes. So that's another great one that I really, really, you know, suggest if you like, you know, movies that are really relevant to not only the time periods that they speak of, but of today that you go check out uh, Mate One. Now, all of these movies you can find in other places, but, you know, sometimes the quality can vary from crappy to piss poor. So that is what's coming up. Now, I did originally have a actual review for a movie um, for Django, but because, like I said, so much has happened, it's late in the day, I'm unfortunately not going to get to Django, so I'm going to save it for tomorrow's show. Hopefully, it will be matched up with some more news coming out of Comic-Con in San Diego, and, you know, I can just, you know, place it back on the back end of that, and we are good to go. Things that are coming up ahead, uh, I am scheduled to go see The Lion King tonight. Now, I, what I mean tonight is this comes out tomorrow, 719. So that would be tonight, but I'm recording it on 718. So that would be tomorrow night. <laughs> but however it shakes up, I'll have a review for it this upcoming Saturday on 720 and let you know what I think of the Lion King. I'm going to see it late in the day, so I won't be able to record my thoughts until Saturday morning. So that's what's coming up. I'm also going to be watching Rosemary's Baby sometime this weekend on the big screen, which is so exciting. So I will have a review of that uh, coming up sometime probably Monday. Probably Monday I'll have a review for that up. So that's what's going on. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for inviting me into your ears, your brain, or whatever you want to call it. Um, don't forget to find us wherever you find us, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher, on Spotify, or on Google Podcasts. Subscribe, like us, rate us, let us know what you think. Um, I'm here to do this show for you. So if you have suggestions, please feel free to reach out to me. Let me know in the show notes. I'm going to leave a link uh, so you can directly send me messages. Let me know what you think of it. And you can also find us on Twitter, on Instagram, on Pinterest, all kinds of stuff that I waste my time on, okay? Just for you. Thank you so much for being a part of this and take care and have a great day.